finally I get to showcase a clip from Australia. Check out this woman absolutely losing it at her boyfriend in public. Oh my god. No way. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? What is that? This. We're vegans. I don't care, babe. I'm done with it. I'm done with all this vegan crap. I'm done with this is, this is an animal. Yeah. It's an animal. I don't care anymore. We've been vegan for four years. Why are you throwing it around? Because that's an animal. I can't believe you're eating this. Are you serious, babe? This isn't even vegan. I don't care anymore. I'm done with it. I'm done with you controlling my life. I'm done with being vegan. This was a joint decision. At the time, I was just trying to impress you. you I'm done with it. I've been doing this behind your back for weeks now. Oh, shit. I go to Macca's with my friends and I eat meat. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'm not even kidding you. I'm serious. We what are you even really really doing here? I was so Let's make predictions for how her mind is going to make sense of what just happened in the aftermath. When she walks away, is she gonna feel guilty and sort of beat herself up? Like, oh, I never should have pressured him into agreeing something that he didn't actually want. I really shouldn't be controlling him and his life and what he eats. I definitely shouldn't have thrown his food on the ground, you know, humiliating him in front of his friends. I think I was in the wrong, I'll, I'll go and apologize to him. Is that what she's gonna think or is she gonna think, he lied to me. He ate meat. He is the worst man in the world. I am the wronged party. I am the victim. Like, I'm not defending this guy. Like, dude, if you don't want to be vegan, grow a pair and tell her. Like, why is he sneaking around? He has a lot of blame in this, but based on her energy and how she's coming across, I don't think she's going to recognize the role that she's played. Have you noticed a pattern in your own personal life when dealing with women? And it goes like this. Man puts up a boundary and woman crosses boundary. Man politely asks for boundary to be respected. Woman refuses. Man asks again. Woman refuses again. The man starts to get frustrated and worked up and then the woman claims victimhood. Suddenly out of nowhere that man started acting so mean. It's almost like she kept acting more and more obnoxious until finally he lost his cool and had a big reaction. As if somehow that she was maybe doing it on purpose so that she could position herself to be the victim. Bingo. Why would she do that? Okay. In order to understand this about women, you need to understand that they feel empowered to act when they are a victim. To men, that makes no sense whatsoever. Why would victimhood be empowering? For us men, to be the victim is shameful. It's embarrassing. It's like we want to hide and isolate ourselves. We don't want anyone to see us in that state. We like to think of ourselves as powerful and in control. To be a victim as a man is a terrible thing, but it's not the same for women. It doesn't carry that same stigma. They're not afraid of. It. In fact, they often seek it out. And in recent decades, they've been enabled by a culture in the West that constantly reinforces to women that they're victims. But I don't want to get too social in my commentary here. I'm just talking in terms of a, an individual perspective, in terms of the psychology of an individual woman. When she is the wronged party, when she feels like she's the victim, that's when she feels empowered. Suddenly, a huge amount of energy gets released and she's almost righteous in her anger. And this is why women will manipulate situations and keep on maneuvering until they can find themselves in that position of victimhood so that they can then take action. Now, obviously, I'm not talking about all women. These are huge generalizations. High quality women don't do this. They're above that sort of thing. But for a lot of women, if she's ever in a disagreement, she's not likely to start engaging properly until first she's positioned herself as the victim. She's not comfortable fighting the battle unless it's within that paradigm where she is the wronged party. You've probably noticed this when dealing with women in your own life, how uncomfortable they are with an image of themselves as a perpetrator. They can't stomach it. A lot of them can't even imagine it. It's just beyond the possibility. No, that could never be me. I'm always the victim. Which leads to some truly bizarre circumstances when she actually has been acting incorrectly. But she won't talk about that. Any conversation with her on that topic about what she's doing that's wrong is going to be very, very frustrating because she's going to slip this way. She's going to deflect. She's going to maneuver. Lots of women will act very passive and non cooperative, subtly, you know, frustrating the situation until it aggravates the man. What she's doing there is she's hoping it's going to provoke some kind of response from him that might be out of proportion so that then she can focus on that. Once she can comfortably frame herself as the victim, now she can engage with you. Let's look at some examples. Let's say you catch her flirting with another man and you get really upset. Like, how dare you disrespect me in our relationship? Do you think that the conversation in the aftermath is going to be about the fact that she's flirting? 
flirting with another man? Or do you think it's going to be about the fact that you're controlling, you're possessive, you're manipulative and jealous, and you made a big deal and were really angry at her, made her feel uncomfortable? I promise you, there are guys in the audience nodding their heads like, yes, I caught my partner flirting with other men or cheating on me, and somehow she made herself the victim. Or let's say she borrows something valuable of yours and she damages or loses it. And so you get really, really frustrated with her. Now, is she in the wrong for not taking better care of your property? Or are you in the wrong for being so judgmental and not understanding that sometimes people make mistakes? Or let's say she changes the outfit three times and causes the two of you to be late for something important. Are you the victim of her being disorganized or is she the victim because you expressed that she needs to hurry and you're being controlling and insensitive to her process? Now, I say this with a certain amount of compassion for women in that admittedly, our society is not very tolerant of women's anger. I don't know what to tell you. I don't think we particularly like male anger either. It's just an uncomfortable emotion all around. But for women, I think there is a lot of sincere cultural pressure telling them to be quiet, to be demure, just to get along with people. I think if she gets really, really angry, then she does run the risk of being labeled as like a bitch or bossy or a Karen or whatever it might be. And so how do women deal with this cultural pressure on the one hand that tells them they shouldn't be angry, they shouldn't express their anger, and with the fact that they are a human being and obviously they get angry sometimes? Well, they find ways to express that anger in the only avenue that they feel like is socially acceptable for them to do so, which is in defense. If she's the victim, if she's the one being wronged, if she's the one that's being attacked, then yes, now she can be angry. Now she can put her full self into it and it's justifiable. She's not just being a shrill bitch. No, she's being a righteous, powerful woman standing up for herself. But as a man sitting on the sidelines, it's just bizarro world because what women seem to be doing is twisting every single situation to frame themselves as a victim so that they can unleash that righteous anger energy. It's actually a terrifying thing to watch, to see how women are able to ignore and push aside the terrible thing that they actually did and instead to focus the fight of the argument purely on the way that you reacted to it. It's that classic, it's not what you said, it's how you said it or when you decided to tell me. Anything, any flimsy justification can be used to position herself as the victim. A lot of men just simply can't keep up in conversations like this. They can't logically track what's going on because they thought they were going to have a discussion about the merits, the rights and wrongs of what she did, but suddenly you seem to be talking about something completely different. You came into the conversation really upset, really angry, but suddenly she's really angry at you. I'm telling you, when a woman is found out for doing something wrong, a lot of the time, especially with low quality women, the first part of that conversation, she's going to avoid the actual meat of what's going on. And she's going to be framing the conversation, manipulating it, maneuvering it to try and paint herself as the victim. And only then when she feels comfortable that she's established that paradigm, does she actually engage. Men, I want you to answer me this question and be completely honest. How many times in your life has a woman looked you in the eye and said, I was in the wrong, I'm sorry. Is that a common phrase? Have you heard that a lot? Or does it feel like no matter what the actual circumstances, because you're a man, you're always cast in the role of the perpetrator. And because she's a woman, she's always the victim. Now, at this point in the video, I can understand that there are probably some people listening who strongly dispute that this is in any way gendered. They're thinking of some men in their personal life who are like, I know lots of guys who cannot admit that they're wrong. Or I know lots of guys that always think that they're the victim. Why are you making this about men and women? Don't you know some men like that, Alexander? Trust me, I absolutely do. And they're such douchebags. It is such a dislikable quality in a man if he can't take responsibility and admit when he's wrong and say sorry. If you're one of those men, then you need to get over yourself fast. You know, take your ego down a few notches, admit that life is hard, you're going to make mistakes, you're going to accidentally hurt people, fess up, say sorry. I think it's actually a strong indicator of masculinity and that a man is high quality when he's able to admit that he's not perfect. If this is something you struggle with and you need to ask my advice, you can hit me up here. But the reason why I'm talking about this in a gendered way is not because there aren't individual men who act in this way too, it's because of the social and cultural pressures that currently exist, which are collectively pushing women towards this victimhood, encouraging it. That same momentum doesn't exist towards men. We don't have a culture that's celebrating and encouraging men to express their victimhood. But we do for women, and that sucks. That has to change. Us men, we lose all the time. We play sports where we lose half the time. We make failed investments. We exist in a dating market where we fail and get rejected constantly. Like, we're always being humbled. And we often act like morons and genuinely have to apologize. Like, us men 
men, we're wrong a lot. And I think that's a good thing. We don't want to be taking ourselves too seriously. We don't want to be so fragile that we can never admit our mistakes. What a misery. But I think that this is an area where women can learn from men. It's okay to lose. It's okay to fail. It's okay to admit that you're wrong. I worry that we're raising a generation of young women who are subjected to such intense brainwashing about how they're just born victims because of their gender that they're never going to be able to admit that they're wrong, not to a man. It's just going to clash against all that cultural propaganda. And no matter how badly they're treating the men in their lives, they're never going to be able to see themselves in any other frame other than them being the victim. Having that strong of a blind spot is potentially very dangerous because if you can't see when you're acting terribly, if you're twisting every situation to make yourself the wrong party, then you're probably going to continue to do really, really awful stuff to the men in your life. I mean, it's never a comfortable thing when you come across a guy who's like, man, I've done some bad stuff. I was not a good dude. I'm, I'm really trying to be better. Like you're like, okay, like that sucks that that's how you used to be, but I respect you owning up to it. I respect you trying to be better. I actually hear those kinds of reflections quite often from men. I don't hear them very often from women. Do you remember that video I released? It was very popular. It had the title something like, if she can't answer this question, dump her. I'll put a link up to there if you haven't seen it yet. But the basic premise of that video was that low quality women cannot admit that they were wrong and that it's actually an effective way to test a woman's quality to see if she can admit the part that she was to blame in her past relationships failing. Like you can test a woman's quality in this way. You can ask her, so why didn't it work out with your ex-boyfriends? If she says, something along the lines of, I was immature, I didn't treat him very well, I took him for granted, I made a lot of mistakes, it really forced me to do some self-reflection and I've changed for the better and I feel like I'm a different person now. That's great, that's good, that's rare, that's that's a high quality woman right there. Look how she's taking responsibility, look how she has an accurate self-reflection of who she is. But if her response was, I was perfect, I was amazing, I was never at fault, I just picked awful guys, they were terrible, they were toxic, they were abusive, every single one of them was always there their fault and I'm just lucky to be away from them. Now I need to find a man who treats me better. Oh yeah, maybe, maybe, but probably not. Relationships are complex. The two people are fighting. The likelihood that she's 100% innocent is very, very low. And if she plays zero responsibility for what role she played in that relationship crumbling, that's a massive red flag. If you're curious to see how that actually plays out in real relationships, check out my course. You'll find some real women, some real stories that demonstrate it perfectly. But if you are a decent man that can recognize when you do wrong, when you act badly and you can take responsibility and you can apologize, then there's no reason why you shouldn't expect the exact same from the woman that you're dating. If she's incapable of giving you that, then why would you want to be in a relationship with her? You can do better. There's nothing inherently special about being a woman, which means that she's above that as an expectation for her behavior. You don't need to cut her slack simply because she's a woman. Being a woman isn't some kind of psychological impairment that prevents you from taking responsibility and any expectation that it should be that way is frankly sexist against women. We have to stop infantilizing them. It's offensive. These are basic requirements for human decency. She can live up to that. If she messes up, if she makes a mistake and does you wrong, she can admit that. She can say sorry. The immature manipulations and, and, and maneuvering to try and turn herself into the victim is really tired. And the truth is that if a woman really cares about you, like who you are as a person, then and she'll rise to the occasion. If she's not willing to give you that, to put in that level of effort, then I don't know why you'd want to be with her. Frankly, it's baffling. So many of the choices that men make about the women that they pursue, women who treat them badly or women who've already rejected them. In my latest Patreon video, I do a deep dive on the psychology of men, of why they pursue women who've shown that they're not interested. But if you start dating a woman who's gaslighting you in this way, always turning herself into the victim, even when she's acting in a bad way, it's better to act on it early because you're going to see this psychological tendency she has to frame herself as the victim play out in some really dark ways if you let the relationship go on. Some of the absolute worst stories I've ever heard in this regard come from divorces or breakups from couples that have been together for a long period of time where they've joined lives, had children, and nowhere will you see this sense of righteous victimhood come out more strongly than in the middle of a divorce. Do you know that many women who seek a divorce from their partner 
willingly accepting the bad guy role. Like, yeah, I didn't treat him properly. I took him for granted. So I'm divorcing. I'm the bad guy. You think there's many women who view themselves in that way? No, it's suddenly now that we're getting divorced, he is the scum of the earth. He has been so horrible. He's done this. He's done that. I couldn't be more of a righteous victim. And she completely blows up his life, removes access to his kids, takes a bunch of money, destroys his reputation. If she wasn't showing a capacity to take responsibility for her mistakes throughout the course of the relationship, why would it be any different now that the relationship is ending? So gentlemen, please, can we collectively raise our standards? Stop giving women a pass simply because they're women. Out of the gate, on the first few dates, if she does something wrong, something that's uncalled for, talk about it. If she says something insulting, if she's disrespectful, if she turns up to the restaurant late, talk about it. Communicate with her, not in a punishing way, but calmly let her know that you're concerned that that fell beneath your standards. And then pay close attention to how she responds. Does she take responsibility for her mistake or does she position herself as the victim? Too many men are so lonely and desperate for female company that they're scared to provoke a conflict with a woman. So they're willing to just accept all this terrible behavior. But I'm telling you, if a woman's acting disrespectfully, then you haven't started the conflict. You actually standing up for yourself isn't creating the conflict. She created it and it's up to her to fix it. Hopefully she steps up. She takes responsibility. She says, yep, my bad. I'm sorry. It won't happen again. And she pledges to do better in the future. If you find a girl who's capable of doing that, then you're good. That's rare. That's awesome. You've probably found yourself a really high quality woman. But if she shifts blame and makes excuses and turns herself into the victim, then I mean, I don't know, you give her one or two more chances, but I would be ready to walk away. I really don't think it's going to work out.